Scott. All right. Um, so I've already uh, established that you can see my screen, and it sounds like you can hear me. Uh, welcome to the August 17th Trade of the Week. My name is Steve Gomez. I'm user number three in the Trade Ideas database, and with me is my longtime friend, trader buddy, and business partner, Andy Lindloff, who is tr user number 40. Hey, Andy. Hey, Steve. What's happening, buddy? So yeah, you guys got you guys got user number three and user number forty uh, in a system that has been used by tens of thousands of people. So we're here to help you tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about the trade of the week. Uh, let's just get right into it. First off, the disclaimer, of course, uh, you guys do recognize that we are content publishers, uh, digital software publishers, uh, software as a service, however you want to call it. We're not registered investment advisors. So if you're looking for financial advice. Um, you got to contact your broker, your licensed broker, and your registered investment advisor. They took lots of tests to make sure that they're doing you the fiduciary responsibility of taking your money and putting you into uh, managed uh, index funds and then going golfing. I love saying that. Um, you're not alone with trade ideas. Uh, I always like to stop on this slide and spend a minute or two. We really do pride ourselves on our onboarding concierge. We recognize Trade Ideas is a very powerful program and can be used in many different directions depending upon your personality or what it is you're trying to look to get out of the market. Uh, four webinars a week, this one included. Uh, we've got another one tomorrow with Jamie and Andy. And of course, what you're seeing here in the screen is the live trading room, which is averaging five to 600 people a day. And the reason is, is one, it's a great trading room with a great moderator, Barry, who is trading his own account and being very patient in talking to new people who want to have questions, uh, want to learn a little bit more about trade ideas, and of course he shares a lot of his setups as well. And additionally, there are some great traders, a handful of really good traders in there that could be moderators uh, in their own right. But free is a great price, and that's why this uh, room continues to grow. People recognize there's a lot of rooms out there uh, for uh, where you have to pay uh, a premium monthly service, but it just you know don't quite come as as good as uh, the room that we have here, and I'm not I'm not just pulling that out of my back pocket. This is what I see, hear, and read every day in the chat room in this particular uh, uh, service that we offer. And then, of course, the biggest deal of all is, you know, if there's anybody out there on the fence, let me just take a second. <clears throat> you know, I, we we see a lot of requests. Well, can I just try the product for free? Um, we have four open houses every year. The next one's going to be coming up in October where we open up everything and all the tools to everybody with real-time data. It's a great way to get acclimated. But during the year, you know, we have a demo account. But the demo account, honestly, between you and me guys is, is really limited. It's uh, 20 minutes delayed prices and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the tools are limited. You don't have a, a lot of the access to the current new tools we've been coming out with. So it's there at least to try and see what it looks like. But if you're really interested, if there's anybody out there really interested in kicking the tires, let me just put this forth here. You know, uh, one month of trade ideas uh, is $99. You take the 15% promo code that Scott's going to give to you guys here at the end, you're talking 84 bucks. And then you've got a one-on-one -on -one session with myself, Andy, or Jamie just you and us, one-on-one, -on -one, to completely listen and find out what it is you're looking to use this product for and custom tailor it and get you out the gate going in the right direction. I mean, that's, that is invaluable in itself. So um, if anybody is thinking about a test drive or kicking the tires, we don't offer any free services until October's open house comes around. But I wanted to spell that out for you. You know, at 84 bucks a month after the discount code and one hour personal uh, time with uh, one of us, and then 30 days to try the, try the product. If you don't know the product's for you after 30 days, and of course, you know, you don't have to continue, but there's just some food for thought out there because we're seeing a lot of new interest coming in. We've talked a lot about the parabolic growth we've got uh, and trying to absorb uh, the customer service for the new people who have questions and want to get going. So think about that. You know, it's, it's not much. 84 bucks is not much for one month considering you get a full hour with us to really custom customize your, your experience and even share some setups and get you going on some configurations you might otherwise not know how to do. So we're very proud of our ongoing concierge service here at uh, Trade Ideas and we firmly believe that that's one of the reasons we're seeing a continued parabolic growth where it is getting out, guys. All right, agenda for August 17th. Um, we're going to do the market recap. We've got some things to talk about. The trade of the week this week was Square. We'll talk about that. We'll talk a little bit about some psychology of trading uh, on the trade of the weeks that we do um, give out because this is the trade of the week webinar, so I want to spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, we'll look at last week's XLF. I've got some price alerts I want to set for you guys. 
And you'll notice on here that there is no Holly recap. Holly had a, a day today where I'll go over it, but what happened was, guys, the, the servers are going through a uh, kind of an unexpected maintenance period tonight. So we don't have any uh, Holly data to recap and go through, but I have a few comments I'll make as well. So we're going to replace that with uh, some chart requests, I think. So hold on to some chart requests. If you guys are out there, if you're long or short, let us know, but don't send them in yet. Uh, when I uh, when I announce that we're going to take some requests, we'll finish up the hour by looking at some chart requests, which everybody can get um, a decent education on. But again, let me know if you're thinking long or short when you send it in, and Andy and I will take a look at it. And that can always be you know, a little bit of fun, and I'm sure there's at least one or two charts you guys are sitting on out there that you'd like to maybe have a second pair of eyes look at, so we'll do that as well. Um, again, the AI performance today uh, was down, I think, 60 cents. It was definitely a risk-off mode type of day. Uh, and I'll explain why that is the case when we look at the spiders here in a moment. But just again, to get reoriented, uh, this was the Brexit volatility. And since the Brexit volatility, Holly's been really dialing it in uh, with some help from our uh, inputs as well as her um, knowledge-based uh, learning. No volatility in the uh, Brexit that we saw here in the SPY because uh, Holly doesn't play that. Uh, Got to have a reason to trade. And if there was no reason to trade with high volatility, there were no signals coming out. And then again, we've got some new strategies that are working really well, including the Alpha Predator. And we've also identified and included some new um, risk management parameters like the, uh, the uh, trailing stop and uh, the reduced risk. But uh, we'll get into some more of that going forward. So let me take this down. And let's just go right into market recap. I don't know how many of you were tuned into the Monday webinar with Jamie and myself, but uh, whew, more of the same here. Um, let's take a look. These lines all have significance. We've been using these lines every step of the way up uh, since the Brexit head fake. And what we're looking at now is this trading range is behind us here between these two orange lines. And we need this orange line, the high one here, to hold. Again, what was prior resistance should become future support if everything is staying intact. But one of the things I called out, and I'm going to zoom in here so it's easier to see, but one of the things I did call out in the Monday webinar with Jamie as I went over this is, where are all the wicks on these candles? Well, if you've been paying attention to the market, there's been an incredible amount of uh, support that comes in towards the end of the day. And you can see here with all these wicks, some of them are more exaggerated than others, but these wicks just keep kicking the ball back into play. You know, there is an underpinning bid going on in this market. And there's even a joke that, you know, there's a ramp capital, uh, some shady group out there that's designed at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time to come in and support this market and prop it up. Well, it's funny, but you know, it's almost, it almost makes you wonder if it's true. But let's take a look at a few things here. What we don't want to see are any of these lines breached and then closed below. So back here, we were fighting with this line. Pop back up, breached it, pop back up. And then second three days, two, three days afterwards, breached it and pop back up. We don't want to see a close below the range that we're in. Well, now we're in this range with this line now being our base. And we've had that happen twice now. A few days ago last week, popped below, tried to run some stops, nothing doing, popped back up, had some nice upward movement, backing and filling. But today, and again, today was a Fed market committee day, so we had some news coming out. We were very weak going into the open market committee, and then the, basically the bounce, the intraday bounce reversed after uh, the Feds came out again and said, we're still confused. We don't know what we're doing. Uh, everything is still as usual. And so here was that nice recovery. Here's the Fed actually right here. So we did start to recover before then. But the takeaway, once again, is we do not want to see a close below this orange line. This orange line is acting as our support. And once again today, uh, the balloon under the water popped right back up again. Um, that's the buoyancy that seems to be the underpinning of this market. Now, I could be singing a completely different song if we had come in today and had a red candle closing back down into this level of congestion. I wouldn't be saying half the things I'm saying today. Um, which brings me to an interesting point, and Andy doesn't even know I'm going to do this, but this is, this, is, this is kind of fun here. Let's take a look at the U.S. fund flows. So the people who don't know how to read charts and don't care about techno technical analysis and poo-poo technical analysis, they're going to get all hung up on this. Outflows, equity U.S. outflows back in July, outflow $2 billion, outflow the next week $4 billion, outflow $3 billion, outflow $3 billion. The latest, outflow $8 billion. Why the hell is this market going up? Well, you don't really need to ask why. There is no need to know why. The price action and the footprints in the sand will supersede every single time when we start to read news and look at fundamentals that, that act like this. You know, this can just kind of 
cloud our mind and make us think, well, geez, gosh, this, how long can this last? Well, that means nothing when I look at a candle like this. This candle supersedes everything that's going on in the news out there with central bankers and outflows and, you know, our economy is you know, trying to find a base. We can give it that with the latest job figures. We'll give, we'll give, we'll, we'll give it that. But my point and the takeaway here is, in the end, I only care and Andy only care about what the footprints in the sand are saying here. And once again, the ball is pulled underwater and released and the ball popped right back up. So, um, and I've got some more to add to that as we touch on one of my alerts as we go forward, but let me just uh, see if Andy has any thoughts here. I've been rambling on. Well, no, you, you, you've rambled on so much that you've covered pretty much every everything that I would have to add to that. I would say, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. You wonder how much selling, all, that, all the outflows that are going on right now, and yet the market is still just kind of levitating here, you know, and it's, 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 it's unlike anything I've ever seen, and you know, I, I think it has an ugly ending at some point. But uh, I'm, I'm like you, Steve. I'm, I'm, I'm a chartist. I've always been a technician. Uh, that's how I learned to trade. Uh, I don't understand fundamental. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't understand them, but I know they, they can be deceiving, and uh, I don't trust them. So I've always been a chartist and a technician. So, and yeah, it's telling me uh, you're exactly right. You know, unless you get a breach and a close below that top line there, don't see any reason to uh, you know to change your bullish you know behavior in this in this market. You know, if we do close below that, you know, we could come back down and t test that second line because I don't see a, a whole lot of resistance to keep us keep us from doing that. Yeah, and I, I think when it finally does come, it's probably going to be fast and quick, like it's been. Uh, you know, if you if you widen out widen out the chart there a little bit, Steve. Yeah, it seems like when we do uh, get these moves, uh, they can be very violent and 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 sharp to the downside. And uh, uh, you know, yeah, I wouldn't be as surprised if one is not just around the corner, but uh, time will tell. But it just seems that it's the pattern we've had for. Geez, seven, eight years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and again, this really tells it all. We had every opportunity for once again for the bull bears to take charge and close below that line, but um, you know we're not the only people looking at these technical levels. Somebody uh, saw value and propped the market right back up, and this is what we've been seeing week in and week out. So until this changes, that's kind of the way it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Quick note here, open positions empty, closed positions empty. For those of you that have a Holly account, AI account, you may notice that the uh, performance today is erased and the trades are gone. We don't really have any history. Well, we did have a Holly day today and she finished down about 60 cents uh, on risk off. And if this isn't a risk off type of day, I mentioned I would clarify that, uh, I don't know what is. Um, a risk on type of day would be a day that just trends nicely and stays you know, green for the whole day, as opposed to going to violent lows and spiking back to violent highs. There's just a lot of whiplash and a lot of noise in there. So noise is a good substitute for um, uh, risk off when you see a noisy market like that. Uh, risk is most likely going to be uh, off in the, in the AI trades. Um, so I don't really have any trades to go through or follow along and talk about or mark up as a trade around. I do want to remind people though, this particular column here, profit change last five. If you don't have this, simply go in and grab a column window and look for that particular window because this is uh, one of the newer columns that we've got and it's a good one to sort on on your close. When you've got closed positions that Holly's exited already, you can keep an eye on what still might have a hot hand in return for another push by sorting your closed on the profit change last 5%. So it gives you an idea of what's been moving in the last five minutes and can keep you uh, abreast as to what might be an early, early opportunity. So, um, you know, again, Holly is uh, doing great the last few weeks. Uh, sorry, I don't have more to show you on this. Here's something I'm a little proud of. Um, it's almost like watching one of my kids in a soccer game, the horseshoe down. Well, there it is, guys. Um, the horseshoe up and the horseshoe down have made it into the Holly uh, base strategy bucket. But just to remind you all that uh, this is not exactly the same configuration that I have here that's showing up that Holly's using. She takes this as a base strategy and then tries to build on it using those numerous back tests, you know, hundreds of times for one, maybe even a thousand times of rerunning a back test trying to optimize the filters to get it to where it's going. So never will I have the exact same alert that's showing up in the uh, artificial intelligence bin for the day, but I am pleased to see that uh, this one has shown up twice now, yesterday and today. 
I believe I had a decent trade yesterday and a decent trade today. But um, this particular alert does still back test well, and it's unusual that the horseshoe up, the opposite of it, which is also now a baseline strategy, which is not today included. Uh, both of these strategies are working really well. So what's cool about it is I no longer have to really watch and keep an eye and back test them to know when they start to fail again. I'm just going to let Holly do that. She'll keep a track of these things and make sure they continue to have a hot hand. But if we stop seeing them in there, then that's uh, one of the main benefits of the AI is a uh, earlier uh, to shut down systems and programs and strategies that are not working. It's a bit harder for humans to do to try and admit that something's not working as well as it used to. So it's a good thing to defer to an unemotional AI on something like that. Speaking of speaking of which, uh, Steve, I, I've noticed I'm, I haven't seen Mighty Mouse uh, very. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Often think, lately, I, yeah, I and, and that used to be ago, yeah. Didn't fire. Um, yeah. That's just the nature of the beast, you know. There's forty yeah. some odd strategies in there, and uh, some of them have a hot hand for a few days and then disappear. Yep. But that's the genius of the AI is to make sure that the hot hands continue to rise to the top because sure. only the strategies will make it to the uh, starting lineup for the following day. Right. Okay. okay, so uh, Holly will be back tomorrow. Server maintenance is supposed to be up at about 10 p.m. Eastern time. Um, that's not a usual thing. It was kind of a one-time thing. There was some hardware that was replaced over the weekend. And Anyway, um, SQ, let's go on to the trade of the week here. So let's first identify the trade of the week. I'll zoom out just a scotch. Um, this is a stock that's a rather new issue. This is the only data we have on it. The first day was a wild swing. Looks like it opened down here uh, in 11.20. Traded as high as uh, 14.77 on day one. And it's been kind of meandering back and forth ever since. Um, but what I found interesting and to discuss with the guys over the weekend, we had a couple of uh, stocks on the, the uh, on the short list. But the SQ Square, if you don't know, that's the uh, little device that you'll pay a uh, maybe a food truck or a mobile vendor at a swap meet and they'll pull out their iPhone they've got a little square thing attached and they run your card through it pretty cool mobile processing payment thing um, but that's not the reason that we're in it the reason we're in it was uh, earnings behind us nice big earnings gap up to here sold off a little bit and starting to base here on the daily chart and turn back up. This green bar was what we were working with when we, over the weekend, created the trade of the week. Uh, and then these sideways action bars here, all we really have to show for it for now. And for now, I say. But for those of you who are kind of paying attention to what I was just talking about, these horseshoe patterns, you know, they work pretty well both on a 15-minute chart and on a daily chart. They're fractal in nature. And so the horseshoe pattern, again, only paying attention to the footprints in the sand, that's what really uh, helps make the decisions, not what I think is going to happen based on earnings or what other analysts think. Forget analysts. That's a whole other story altogether. They're not even working for us. They're working for somebody else. But that is the, one of the main crux ideas of the, uh, the SQ trade. In addition, I don't know if it's going to be on here currently. It's not. Uh, it was on my squeeze me play. Um, my squeeze me stocks that I used. This is one of the. This was really the main reason why I found it in looking for short squeeze type plays. Last time we did a play like this with a bit of a daily horseshoe, the gap up in the horseshoe was Pandora, and Pandora is a lot higher than it is uh, back here. It's had its zigzag route for sure, but it's intact, making higher lows along the way. Maybe even today, you could make an argument for this green bar after a good week of uh, solid selling. You might be even digging in here on Pandora and putting mm -hmm. uh, another higher low. But back to SQ, um, here's what we need to see happen. We really need to see this market continue to hold up because let's face it, you know, the market, the backdrop really does hold everything. If we were down 300 points today, square would not look like this. Square would probably be maybe even down here towards the gap. But in this particular instance, if you read the email alert, uh, we gave uh, two different stops, kind of like a risk on, risk off stop. If you're very conservative in nature and you don't want to give too much risk, well, my idea was, look, here's the bottom of this wick right here. Just below that, we're entering into the gap. And um, the first uh, stop talks about using this as a protection from the gap. If we get down below these levels, chances are we're probably going to try and fill the gap. And so if you're not interested in, in letting that happen, that would be the first uh, place to jump off as a stop loss. And we're going to talk coming up here about patience and how patience can be a virtue, especially in the longer position trading where you're looking at candles on a daily chart, not a five-minute chart. For those of you who understand that things might take time to develop and have a bit more risk tolerance, the gap could essentially be filled down here, but the secondary, more aggressive stop is going to be about, uh, I think it was 10, 25-ish 
uh, basically giving the gap fill and then a bit more overrun, a bit more slop to try and not get picked off on there. So that's the risk reward thinking on this one right now. Again, this is a rather new issue and there's no reason to think that we can't get back up here to these levels up here in the $15, $16 level. But it's going to take a little time and a little patience. Again, here's the S&P. Haven't really done much except a false start and some sideways and a little downward uh, hiccup and it's sideways for the most part. So, um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd get this SQ'd around on Tuesday or Monday as, as the call comes out. And we've had a few of those in the past. Those are always nice, but uh, I don't want people to start getting used to those. Um, we need to be able to develop a little bit of patience along the way sometimes. So speaking of patience, let's go back to last week's XLF. And I had mentioned in the Monday webinar, it really is going to need to have the, the S&Ps hold up. If the S&Ps don't hold up and they crash and burn and fall back into the range, then both these trades, I would suspect, you know, are going to fall into some, uh, some headwinds as well. But let's look at the XLF here, last week's trade of the week. Very definable price action on a downtrend. Breaking that downtrend, which is a lot of times what we like to do, is look for trends that are breaking and uh, good setups. Well, we didn't get our move on Monday of last week and we got a little bit of a pullback on Wednesday, but we're still back above that. Um, this trade is just taking a little bit more time to work out. And, and the problem is, is when we start to get into trades that require patience and longer term, you will do everything in your power to try and talk yourself out of a trade and take what little pittance might be on there that's green just for the sake of getting it over with, you know. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to do to stay in these trades when they're not working. Obviously, like I said, we'd love to see some, some, uh, some follow through in our direction to start with, but we got the opposite. But it dug in, backing and filling, dug in again, um, moving higher. It's actually looking better than the S&P at the moment. S&P is a bit more, uh, mm -hmm. bit more weak in the last three days, but XLF, I really like the way it's holding up there, XXLF. Um, we could see a decent day, you know, uh, with the Fed uh, behind us, the minutes behind us, you know, there could be a catalyst tomorrow. Uh, it was a decent close today. So point being, um, once again, patience really is a virtue. I know it's difficult when uh, some of you guys are trading for nickels and dimes on a five or 15 minute chart, but for those of you who are, you know, and that's the purpose of this evening's calls or to try and identify trades that are going to work. You know, CWEI was a trade we had way back here. Look what it's done since then. I mean, uh, I don't expect anybody to stick around that long, but these are the types of looks that we're looking for. You know, Pandora, same thing, really nice move in Pandora. Um, Etsy, Etsy was a call a few weeks ago. Etsy took its own sweet time, actually even had a fake out, but in the end, that particular pattern worked, and it probably had a nice short squeeze in there as well. And we're going to talk a little bit more about these patterns and, and what's working and what's not working um, coming up. So just real quick, XLF, still intact. Please be patient. These things do take time. Um, there's no reason to get out unless this thing starts to fill the gap. And, you know, if you want to start adhering to the suggested stops, I suggest you pull up that email. But right now there's really no alarm bells going off. It's just going sideways waiting for its moment. You got any uh, thoughts there, Andy? Yeah, I'm I'm really impressed with the uh, with the way this is holding up. Uh, relative strength is very strong. It's one of those sectors where it really hasn't had a lot of money flowing. Like you've you've seen the oil stocks take off, the utilities, of course, and money being uh, uh, tossed around from sector to sector. This and this and really hasn't uh, seen it uh, uh, lately. But but uh, uh, if you go back to it, yeah, I I'd, I'd I'd love to add to. Uh, there's nothing. First of all, if you're if you're playing a swing trade, we really don't like to call them swing trades. We call them de uh, position trades. You have to trade it on the daily. I mean, if you're looking at the intraday action of the day, the spiders, the way they opened up, and all of a sudden, then you see the XLF, man, getting close to lows. It's very easy to say, oh man, I'm done. I'm panicking out of this. But a real position trader or a swing trader, they they want to see where the stock closed. They're not care. They don't care about the intraday uh, action. Okay. Did we even hold that uh, low from yesterday on the XLF there, Steve? Or did we just go below? Looks like it, it took a penny. Uh, 2390, 2390 matched it. Yep, to the penny. So uh, if it would have, you know, dropped down another 20, 30 cents and closed, yeah, I could see where a person is saying to themselves, "Hey, it did not do what I expected it to do. I'm going to exit it. I can enter it later." But uh, you got to be patient. If you're playing a stock uh, to to hold on for a few days, you you need to play the dailies and, and try to get out of that intraday uh, uh, freaking wash tub 
high <laughs> high frequency trading <laughs> just, uh, mode and, and, and focus on the dailies. One more uh, observation on SQ, and I know Andy will agree wholeheartedly. This first day on Tuesday, we had a really aggressive downside on the open. And I just laugh because I've seen this so many times. This is where HFT algorithms try to hunt you in the first 15 minutes. This is the opening print of twos of Monday. And I've seen this so often, more often than not, I actually laughed when I saw this. I mean, and because it's just I knew it was going to do this. However, what if this massive downdraft happened at the close or even happened midday? Now, that's a little different story because in my mind, this is just par for the course. This is just normal market operations. You get some of these stocks where HFT uh, able to sniff out um, stop orders where all these people that maybe had, had, had this nice run here started looking at the daily chart saying, well, I really don't want to get out if it goes much lower. I, mean, I don't want to be in it if it goes much lower. And so they put their overnight stops in. And I'm convinced, it's not proven, but I'm convinced that you know HFT, they really kind of know where the stop hunts are. And I'm, I, I never really, this is the takeaway, I never really get too concerned about a long position if in the first 10 or 15 minutes you've got this algo stop hunt where it trades down mm -hmm. extremely fast and then reverses right back up and starts making highs on the day. Nothing to fear on that, especially if that stock is in an uptrend. That is normal operating behavior of the way price action works these days. Do I like it? No but it's here and we have to deal with it. So I just try to remind myself if it's the first 15 minutes, that type of volatility is normal um, going forward. Yep. All right. Um, oh, XLU, you brought up a good point. You guys can see a green line I had here. I triggered a price alert a few days ago. I said, you know, you guys have heard me talk all about the gap fills and we had, you know, even Facebook was a trade of the week gap fill. This gap right back here, this was the entry right there and it's looked, never looked back since. Mm -hmm. But XLU, guys, if you're, I've got two uh, sectors for you tonight to talk about. First one is the XLU, the utilities, based on what the sector ETF did. Beautiful gap fill, textbook gap fill, and then major reverse onto highs. I expect to maybe see some follow through from the XLU utilities. And then just getting a bit ahead of ourselves here on the GDX, uh, this one particular candle is going to come into play as we talk a little bit more today about um, some of the setups on the washout bounce. And let's just actually, let's just get right to that. Um, and before I get to my washout bounce, I want to show you guys something that I think is a bit interesting, and I'm putting it in my back pocket to make sure that uh, I don't forget about it. 11.10, uh, all the way up to, I mean, I'm Pacific Coast time. So this is about the last two hours or so. I have never seen this many alerts come out of my washout bounce. Now, give, granted, a lot of these are going to be um, duplicates, but still, there's a lot of names in here. I've never seen the last hour and a half be so active. And the last hour and a half is when I most pay attention to this particular window, uh, the washout bounce. Um, this is going to be one that we're going to mark up here. This is a classic example that this particular scan, washout bounce, is looking for. A nice, uh, long washout to the downside, and then trade right back up, kind of like what we were talking about a minute ago that happens a lot in the mornings. And oh, wouldn't you know it, SIR, basically a morning washout and then a recovery for the rest of the afternoon. In my experience, guys, this is the candles that I'm really starting to focus a lot on lately. Um, it works well for the time frame that I enjoy, you know, swing trading, swing scalping, whatever you want to call it. Because if you've seen me back test this thing, we know that these types of candles back test really well for a three or four day hold. Let me give you an example. TCB was on this last Friday. TCB triggered one, two, three days, and it's had a nice little move. The move might be might be over. Matter of fact, if I just back test this right now, I want to show you something. If I hold for three days, this particular one, market plus three days, uh, we'll get a decent score. It's amazing what happens when I move this up to. Well, what happens if I try and hold for longer for seven days? Well. Uh, there's a bit of a surprise factor in there. For some reason, these particular setups work really well for a two, three, four day bounce. Beyond that, it's mm -hmm. kind of uh, beyond us. Yes, yeah. yeah. Lose control. But I'm I'm waiting for this back test here to quickly uh, show you something. So, back testing for three days, decent numbers. What if we back test this thing for seven days? What if we want to try and hold it longer and really maximize our profits? Well, the AI is telling us. I don't even have to let the thing continue to run. It tells us right off the bat on this thumbnail, no, that's gone. Your window has closed. So yep. I wanted to show you guys a real good um, example of that, and that's this uh, this TCB. Here's Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now all bets are probably off. This could roll over or go, but we're just looking to try and take a bite out of the middle of something that works. Look at how drastic three days makes. Here's 
three day hold, seven day hold. Amazing. So um, it's, it's pretty much it's pretty much the same as my uh, volume doesn't lie, Steve. I noticed, it, yeah, it, uh, and that's what this market is doing. It, it, it's just. Uh, it's. I don't want to say it's going nowhere fast because it is creeping higher. It is melting up, but people are quick to take profits in uh, because I, they. I think in the back of their mind they know, at some point, yeah, the party's going to come to an end. Uh, so they're just taking out of what you know, taking what they can from it, and uh, not uh, trying to, you know, hold on for too long. All right. Well, let's move on with a new theme here: um, the price alerts. I try to remind people all the time the price alerts are a glorious tool that gives us wonderful feedback. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed by now, let's take a look at what the top five trades are. And this is why I'm so diligent on making notes to myself. All I have to do, guys, is look at this three, three and a half week running price alerts, look at my triggers and my workings, P&L is up. But what comes to fruition here and what comes to be very obvious is, okay, what's working? Trend change lubricant with short float behind it. There's no doubt in my mind when I look at this board here, the trend change lubricant is you know cleaning up right now. So we want to stay with what's working. So in that vein, we're going to start marking up some charts here for the uh, the um, price alerts, and we'll start with trend change lubricant. And yes, uh, Steve D, I anticipated that, so we're done talking about the washout until we come back to it for a few trades of the week. We'll go ahead and save and share. It's a very simple formula. Um, and I'll drop it right into the chat window on the uh, GoToWebinar chat toolbar, paste, and there you go. Um, if anybody missed it, you can always email me, steve at trade-ideas.com, and I'll get you a working copy. So since I just showed you the price alert, did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to add something to that, and because uh, we, Steve and I both follow a zero hedge, and, and he's always calling this out, and he does not just call it out. He, he has documentation proving it, and and just showing that it's the most shorted stocks. It's it's almost like it's a conspiracy out there. Uh, it, it, it's the most shorted stocks that are seeing the biggest gains in this market uh, over, uh, oh gosh, it happens over and over and over again, but uh, uh, Zero Hedge, it, it, it tickles me because he's always right on top of it. And mm -hmm. and, it, and Steve, it, with, with uh, this incredible software, is ba basically able to validate his point by just showing you uh, the the returns you know he's seeing on just by putting a price alerts on these uh, uh, these short these most shorted uh, trend change lubricants so uh, well yeah coming right off the heels of that all those trades that are working uh, this is probably the thinnest I have seen the trend change lubricant uh, after the close um, in a while but mm -hmm. I do have a few that we can uh, we can work off of Bank of Internet is showing something really interesting here. And guys, uh, quickly, the real highlighted column on this top list is short float. So starting at the top here, Bank of Internet, 41% short the float. I like the way this thing is starting to creep higher here, higher low, higher low, kind of even flagging and starting to break away from the pack. I've seen this look before. We got hung up at this high and the high of today. I'm thinking there could be a decent uh, case to be made for a head start on this wick and then a head start back at these levels. Um, if it continues to trade the way it has been with some short float behind it, it could be an early warning or an early look at a, a possible trade that's no different from a lot of the other trend changes over against we've been looking at than basing, 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 and then trying to move higher. The catalyst to moving higher, of course, certainly helped by the short float. So let's go back to this particular one. We'll just grab the high of today, uh, which is 1857. So we're going to go 1858. I can adjust that at the moment. And being very diligent, so when I come back, if these trades are working, or even worse, not working, I can kick them out and say that particular strategy is not doing very well right now. So TCL at 41%, that's all I need to know. That's where I got that trade. These are the ones that are working, so I'm going to continue to give them the benefit of the doubt. That one is set. Uh, BCEI is the next one on here. And this one, we're going to do a little bit of a pullback. Um, Big move today, uh, giant move today, but I've highlighted a, a little hitch here in the 15-minute chart, and that little hitch actually lines up with a lot of prior resistance and support, so a bit of a pivot line. Rather than trying to be Johnny-come-lately and chase the train after it's left the station, if we miss it, we miss it. But if it gets a little dastardly on the people that bought late today and tries to shake them out and pull it back, this is probably the level they're going to shake it out and pull it back to. So I'll just go ahead and do a rough... Uh, 
I'll use the five minute to the 15 minute chart here. I don't know why I, have, I don't know why I have two. I think it was 107 was the level I liked. So I have to change this to a long because we're coming down to the price. I remind myself this is a pullback alert. Some of my pullback alerts haven't worked as well, but a few of them still do. But a pullback alert from trend change lubricant still having 35% short. So I've given myself enough information on that one. PBY, PBYI, um, yeah, let's take a look here. Pretty good line in the sand right here at these two levels. I like how it stopped and is going sideways, has not given too much back, and now it's creeping back up again, maybe trying to make another assault. But if it makes another assault on these twin peaks here, I want to know about it. And those are uh, 50, 89. I'm just going to put it right at 50, 89 and try and get an early look. No, that was wrong. High is 50, 89. Why is that not? Yes, there we go. I'll just match that price, 50, 89. And um, again, this is also trend change lubricant from below, 33% um, short the float. And I believe the last one I got is really the only one that's on here, and I'm trying to give these as much benefit of the doubt as I can, and this also is going to be a pullback alert. One, two, three, four, five good days of movement, nice little topping tail here. I think you'd be foolish to buy it right here based on uh, the prior run and the big topping tail. Let's see from where it came. Uh, resistance of resistance there, more resistance there, so, and third, I've got four levels of resistance I can look at. So I'm just going to right click and call this one another pullback alert, it's going to be long. Pullback alert, just in case it fires, I can pull it up and see what's going on. And we're getting down to the bottom of the barrel on short flow, 22%. Normally I don't like to look at things under 20%, uh, they don't seem to have as much oomph. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to move on to a little bit different. The trend change lubricant short. I did find a couple of interesting ones. Oops, I did find a couple of interesting ones on here. And I'm just going to go right to them and highlight them briefly and why I like them. KBH, what I like here was the bounce and then the comeback to the bounce. And it's like a bouncing ball, You're just kind of looking for that level. I'm not chasing four or five red candles down here. We're looking for a level of uh, congestion. And it actually kind of broke through today and then pull back up. But if it goes back down and takes out today's low, I do want to know about it. I want to have a few shorts ready just in case this market does change. Uh, I'm not saying I'm predicting it, but it's always nice to have a little bit of both in your quiver. So low, 15, 17. All right, so we'll right click. Yeah. We do want to go short. 15, 16 is the next step below. We're going to wait for it to clear that level. We're going to call this TC short. Trend change to the short side. Now on these, the, the, the short flow doesn't matter. What I sort by on these is relative volume. I'd like to see which ones are doing the better uh, relative volume. But uh, for now, we'll just go back. All right, there was another one that I liked on here. It was a TPC. Uh, again, a nice bounce. Mm -hmm. Failure to Rainbow bounce death. up higher. Rainbow death. This is actually, yeah. thank you, this is actually an inverted uh, horseshoe for the most part. Gap down. It did fill the gap but wanted nothing part of it after that, so we're heading back to lows. So just to follow through on today's lows, 2267, right click, 2266, TCL, short. And then USG is another one that I liked on here. Where are you, B? USG. Um, very close to this one little wick down here. If it takes it out tomorrow, there could be some follow through. For the most part, sideways. It hasn't expended too much energy getting down here, but uh, we'll go on a low 27, 28. We'll go 27, 27, and TCL short. Being diligent, short. Okay. I think I blew that one somehow. I'm not exactly sure what I did. Delete. Let's try that again. Why did that not work? TCL short should not have triggered. Delete. Okay. Let's try that again. TCL short. The low, I'm sorry, USG short. The low is uh, 27, 28, 27, 27. So we'll go 27, 26 short. TCL. This one should work. Thank you. There it goes. Okay, so that's enough for the inverted trend change lubricant. Um, now we're going to go over to the actual um, washout, uh, the alert that I had earlier. And a couple that I liked from here um, that I pulled out that I was watching close to the close. I've, I've only got three 
BBDY. Um, yes, Jay, I saw your comment. Not all these are going to work, but for the, major for the most part, the majority of them are working pretty well. It's, it's, there's nothing that's cut and dry in this business. Um, you can see I actually already set an alert on that, and I should probably delete that. Let me do that, and we'll reset that again so everybody has the same one. Um, one of the ways in which you can delete an alert is just turn off your crosshairs, highlight it, hit the delete key. Are you sure you want to delete that? Yes, it's gone. So now let's put our crosshairs back on and basically set it back to the high of yesterday is how I did it. I'll just do it right there at 744. Um, wash out so I know what this is. Great. Okay, that's the first of the washouts. The second is going to be CPL. Um, not, not as exaggerated on this one, but still uptrending. This is probably the washout bounce for the uptrend. I'm just going to go ahead and, and highlight that high if it trades through tomorrow. If we want to know about it. There was a lot to choose from today on this particular alert, by the way. So I'm trying to focus on the ones um, that are in uptrends that are looking somewhat uh, decent. Uh, this one had, I think, I like the most. We can see. If you're long up here, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to set my sh stop just below this level because I don't want to get stopped out. If the price goes down below this level, I'm probably going to, it's going to be a loser and I don't want to be a part of it. That's exactly how these things work. It's in a nice uptrend. Find the level that makes the most sense. The algorithms collude. Run the stops and look again. Like I said this morning, uh, SSIR was the first candle of the day or the second candle, so it's a morning washout. That's exactly what I want to see. I'd rather see that morning washout, have it recover all day long, close near highs, and then it's ready to be marked up. So mm -hmm. we're going to mark it up. Uh, I'm actually going to look at the 15-minute chart here and do a little bit more surgical extracts. I see a couple of hitches right here and here, so I'm going to go right above that. And I'm just going to say if you can get back above that level, I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. All right. A um, couple things I did notice. Uh, GDX, like I think I showed you earlier, a lot of the names in the GDX, Newmont, um, AU, they all are showing our washout type bounce. So a little, uh, little honorable mention for you guys to scribble on your napkins uh, tonight. Um, XLU and GDX both had some interesting type reversals today. GDX using the washout bounce type candle as well. So as I'm going to do this now, I'm going to bring up my price alerts and we're going to highlight the ones that we just did today. Take off the working. Sorry, take off the triggers. Created. 817 is right now. Here's our working alerts. Go ahead and um, share these 10 selected alerts. Now, as I'm doing this, guys, we're going to take a, uh, a request. The first five stock symbols you guys type in, we will look at those. Let me know if you're thinking long or short, and uh, we'll get to those here as I drop this into the chat window for those that want. And we'll take a look at five charts to finish up the day here. All right, share, 10 selected items, copy all. If you guys have premium uh, uh, functionality and subscriptions, just drop right into the chat window there, and you can save that link and load from your cloud. All right. All right, all of our housekeeping is done there. Let's see what we got here. How do you, well, here's a good question. How do you prefer to sort the flipped trend change lubricant? Uh, yeah, Harry, I like to use the um, uh, relative volume. Maybe I said that after you mentioned it. All right, one more chart and it will be done. I think we're going to be done. Okay, so UNG long. Oh, natural gas. What does natural gas look like? Well, I would have liked to have seen it hold this level for sure, and it didn't. I'd like to see it get back above that level, and it might be doing that here and fighting it. So ideally, I like to always identify a pivot level, and I think we got one here. Um, major congestion back here at this level, congestion again here at this level, straight out bounce here at this level and then more congestion. After it traded through, it didn't follow through, it's more uh, more congestion. So that's what I'm seeing. I, it's kind of back in no man's land right here at this pivot. I'd like to see it get back above this level without thinking too much of the fundamentals that you know and love. Andy, what do you think about this chart? Yeah, it's just not showing me a whole lot right now. It's kind of in no man's land. It's, you know, it's pulled back and it's bounced up a little bit. I'd like to see it you know, if it would have bounced up closer, you know, above that, around that eight level, and then kind of gone sideways. But uh, uh, more it is right now, you know, I would, uh, 
I would have to pull up maybe one of the uh, range resources or, or SWN, take a look at those and see if I could find a better looking, you know, uh, even Chesapeake I think I saw coming through the alerts today. Yeah, looking kind of interesting there on Chesapeake mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah. Uh, range resources. Yeah, I'm just, I look around the sector, but uh, you're obviously playing a commodity there. That's not my forte. Uh, but just looking at the chart, I, I'm pretty neutral on that one because it's just kind of a no man's land. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think it needs to show itself from here. This is the yeah, major point I think it, it needs does. to work off of. Uh, what's the difference between volume and relative volume? Mohammed, volume is uh, the volume that's doing for the day. Relative volume is relative to that time of day. What's really cool about trade ideas is it knows what the run rate for the volume should be. So if stock XYZ at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock Eastern is doing 200,000 shares, that's a value of 1. If stock XYZ is doing 400,000 shares at 10 o'clock Eastern, that would be a relative value of 2. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is, it just tracks the run rate and Trade Ideas has a catalog and knows what the baseline values of what a 1 should be. So when we see volume that's abnormal for that time of day, that's when the relative volume starts to change. All right, um, UNG, we did that one. SPSH, SPSH. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, when I see stocks that had a move like this, uh, going from basically $2, there's a horseshoe for you, to $8 in a period of less than a month, really needs a lot of time to work off that blow off steam. And a lot of times it takes a lot longer than we all care to or want. A lot of people right here probably thought this was going to be the next move higher. But I'm here to tell you my first blush gut feeling, this thing with that giant spike still has some working off to do. And that's just, maybe this one's different, but in my experience, I call it the other side of the mountain. You know, once it broke like that and reversed midday, it's kind of on the other side of the mountain right now, and it's going to need to put in some work and some time before I think it comes back. Um, I can see there's a gap fill here. There could be a case to be made for a gap fill. You could mm -hmm. dip your toe in the water, but you don't want to see it trade much below this 409 wick we had here this morning. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. And and always look back in the chart from from whence it came, you know. And it's just less than uh, uh, what a couple of months ago is trading uh, below two dollars. Uh, it's had a nice move, you know. That that is one I would definitely wait for volume, you know, to see. I mean, uh, anticipate. I mean, you could argue that if it takes out today's highs. Uh, which it looked like it did a little bit in after hours, uh, but it's not one that I would rush into because uh, uh, I tell you Short what, I, I, only uh, eight. Yep. How much, the float is 19 million. Anything under 20 is rather low, so this can be a squirrely, slippery type stock if you're not careful. Yeah. I do like, like Steve says, it, it has filled that gap and it's trying to hold the four. So if you're wanting to play this, you know, if you want to pick it up in the mid-20s or something like that and just use your four as a stop, I can understand that. Uh, but for me, uh, this is a momentum play. You see here, big volume on this move, big volume. This is kind of ugly, big gap up, downside volume, and really hasn't done a whole lot since that downside volume, just other than bleed lower. So I would have to see a bar reversal accompanied by, you know, decent volume, and even then, it's going. To, it would have a tight stop on it because I've seen too many stocks like this uh, where I know the end outcome, and the end outcome is usually not pretty, and it's trading back there. You know, down back to at 175 or something. Like you know, yeah. on the plus side, you do have the trend that's starting to come into play here. Albeit it's kind of a violent trend, but for the most part, looking at these lower lows and higher lows, drawing that trend line, it is also lining up here. So it's just one more reason to not really let this thing trade much below 405 or 4 dollars yeah. for the most part. Yeah. So you got the gap going for you, you've got the trend line going for you. What you don't have going for you is this washout blowout top from behind. In my experience, over 20 years, these things take a lot longer to work themselves out than you think, and you usually forget about them by the time they turn around. Yep. All right, we do have a, a double in this particular case, so we'll hit Ren. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, kind of similar in the same veins as what we were just talking about. Um, Pretty good blow off top yesterday. Hasn't really given much back. We do have this gap all the way way back here. Um, this is not the kind of chart that I would come in and try and uh, identify a long term position on. Uh, it's expended a lot of energy from uh, five dollars up to 19 in the course of two weeks. Um, 
these are th th these are tough charts to to try and get a handle on. They're the volatility just amplifies everything, and so everything goes to the extreme. And a lot of times things can go through your numbers and then reverse back. And um, ideally, what you'd want to see is maybe three or four more days of this action, sideways action, up here in the upper third of this level, holding, and maybe it's turning to flag for another possible move higher. But uh, going off the heels of yester uh, of, of the last uh, comment, once I see kind of a big blow off like this, I just I just don't know where to uh, where to jump in. Do you have yeah. any other thoughts? No, no, I agree. At this level, this is something I, I would like to have caught more uh, a lot quicker. And and probably, I mean, you had a breakaway gap right here. I mean, this right here, it closed above that low, and then the breakaway gap, and hasn't looked back since. Uh, yeah, I'm like Steve, you know, some people don't care, they'll just tell themselves, hey, this thing has momentum, I'm just going to keep buying it, and you know what, a lot of times they're right, and they'll look, maybe looking at $25 here in a couple of days. You know, uh -huh. not, not to be capped in hindsight, but the only thing I really had back on was this line sitting here back from the past, and I can see why I drew it now, you know, that, that level of resistance mm -hmm. pulled back and then became support. So it's a great example here when you hear us say prior resistance becomes current support. Back here, we could have made a case for some sort of a trade, but after all this, it's, it's just it's, it's, that's a tough one. Now, what I do like about this chart is is you have consistent volume every day. I mean, look what it was doing going before Here, going into this uh -huh. spot. Yes, and then it died and you, down. All this yeah. move, this is huge volume. So this is one that I'll go ahead and do right now and set me alert. You know, down here around the fourteen. Uh, 50, right around 1460. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's take a look here on our pullback, 50. you know, to see if, yeah, see if I can get this thing to pull back about $3 because it is, it is definitely used a lot of energy. It does need to do back and feel. So that, that's when you look, may want to look for a pullback. On yeah. the, Here's the this congestion volume. right here. Here's this congestion something right going here. On. There's something going on. There's big volume, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just set up for, just for fun, pullback alert. Mm -hmm. Just to watch. Okay, all right, the last and final chart request of the hour is going to be NVIV. Not a name I'm familiar with. Let's take a look at from where it's come. Oh, I've got kind of a trend change lubricant factor looking going on there. Uh, real quickly here, short floats only 9%. Earnings are behind us, float of 30 million, rather small. But yeah, we've got this nice gap up. I'm not really sure, nor do I really care what the news is. So we always try to just look at the footprints in the sand. But you can see it looks like it's settled right back into this area of where it was comfortable. That's the first thing that comes of notice to me. You know, this area back here, right here, right here, back here, back here. And this, we got got through it today, but kind of pulled back and then just are sitting at this level. Yeah. It's a great start. I don't really have anything negative to say about this. You yeah. know, make a case for, you know, kind of a double bottom here. Um, Higher low here is good. The sideways con congestion is good. There's no real short flow to propel it much higher. It has had its day in the past, and it has taken a while to recover, kind of like what we talked about. This is back in March, guys, so it's been taking you know six months here to really kind of get itself get its bearings. You know, I, I would just set a price alert right at the top of that uh, range for today and see if you can get any follow through. If you're already I mean, long, even. even even better than that, if you look uh, at uh, the, the, those highs back in March, I think you're going to find them around 720. And uh, boy, above that level, uh, I'm sorry, Steve. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, right there, that level. Uh, yeah, if it gets above that, uh, boy, that could really be off to the races. There's no, there's no resistance there. And uh, so I, I just set one right there, as a matter of fact. And uh, I love the volume today. That was huge volume. It pretty much held its. Uh, uh, held its own on a, on a big gap, and uh, yeah, that's that's one that has a lot of potential. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff, guys. Uh, I just want to add this. I know we're kind of running out of time, but if we're going into it historically, and plus, Steve and I have got like 18 years a piece of trading, and I think we both, uh, you know, vouch for the fact that uh, this we're going into the toughest time of the year. Uh, uh, late August. Late, yeah, late July and early August. The first week in all, August, I think, is always been my worst trading week of the year. All of Europe uh, goes and, on vacation. And for honest. some reason, it actually lasts <laughs> about a week after Labor Day. It can just be really mundane, tough trading. This is where you need a product like trade ideas, okay, because there's action out there, and it's hard to find, but trade ideas will find it. So... Uh, this is this is where I just forget all the market action and uh, the big caps, and I focus on, you know, what's coming through, 
uh, my uh, volume alerts, my alpha predator, and some other ones that I have, and um, uh, find the find the alpha. Mm -hmm. Alpha hunting. Real Sorry. quick, just looking at the intraday, just to cap off your NBI uh, NBIV call there, sir. If you're already long, really want to see it get back above seven. I'm just looking at that little candle intraday here. It seems like uh, that was the intraday level that it couldn't quite get back above. So I'll be watching. The, if I were you, I'd be watching that seven level tomorrow for a possible head start at uh, at new highs where today was. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, that's all we've got for you this evening. Appreciate you tuning in and staying tuned in. I see all you have pretty much stayed here, and that's good to know that the content is hopefully something of value. Uh, we'll see you all again next Friday for the next trade of the week, which we don't know what's going to be until the weekend presents itself. So with that said, I'll just pull the slide back up and um, let Scott uh, will, take us out. I will say stay tuned for tomorrow. I will be uh, possibly <laughs> introducing another one of my position trading ones, much like Volume doesn't lie, which I know everybody enjoyed. I may, uh, I may have another one to tease you guys with tomorrow. I'm sorry, All Scott. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks, oh, great. Thanks for the great preso. Um, yeah, to thank everyone for joining us, we like to give uh, you all a little way to save some money. So if you use that product code you see right there, trade me all caps, just like you see it, it'll take 15% off your first month or year of premium, which includes access to Holly, the price alerts, and some other goodies like our back testing tool, the Odds Maker. Or you could uh, opt for the standard, and that code takes 10% off your first or year, month or year of standard. And uh, the core plans for standard uh, are 888 per year, and the core plan for premium is 1888 per year. Of course, monthly is also available. Made an easy way for you to remember this. Uh, if you go to the handouts panel on your go-to webinar interface and expand it, you'll find a PDF link to download that also includes, in addition to this slide, our contact slide, which has information about how to reach us best. So if you have any questions about this, you can email us at info at trade-ideas.com. That is also the best place to send any technical questions. Our phone line is great for help with uh, subscription access or billing. Uh, however, again, uh, technical stuff or trading advice should go to info at trade-ideas.com, how to use the software. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash tradeideaspro. Uh, we do post some different content there. So it's, uh, if you got a Facebook account, you should probably like us there so you can keep in touch. Uh, follow Steve Gomez on Twitter at Today Trader or follow Dan Merkin at Trade Ideas One. We also have at Trade Ideas. Thanks, y'all. There'll be a recording of this up a little bit later. Uh, we have a trading studio webinar with Andy tomorrow. Uh, you should probably receive an invite for that if you haven't already this evening, and then again tomorrow. Another reminder if you're registered with us. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing you there or next week in this webinar too. Uh, thanks, Andy. Thanks, Steve. All right. Have Thank you, Scott. All right. Bye-bye.